Well, we're going to go ahead and get things kicked off here. Uh, first of all, we'd like to welcome everybody. Um, you know, this uh, webinar is titled Why Capriotis? And, you know, it's really going to be just a, a quick introduction to the Capriotis brand, which is unbelievably amazing for many reasons. Um, but our food is absolutely incredible for any of you that are with us today that have never eaten at a Capriati's, it's literally gonna blow your mind. And my name is Bruce Evans, I'm the Vice President of Franchise Development at Capriati's, and I'm gonna be hosting us today. And uh, we are joined by um, our senior leadership team members, uh, David Bloom, who is our Chief Operating and Development Officer, and Jane McPherson, who's our Senior Vice President of Marketing. And we are gonna take some time today to introduce you all to the Capriati's brand. And, you know, just a little quick housekeeping before we do that. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to use that Q&A function down below to, uh, to ask some questions. And we'll be happy to, to answer those along, your, along the way. Um, this is not a, you know, formal format. Um, we welcome any and all of your questions that you might have. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, give David Bloom the opportunity to, uh, to take over. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody taking the time today. Um, you know, as, as we kind of introduce ourselves and go through the process, um, one of the things that's really important to us is to help you, and obviously also to help ourselves, figure out if this... Capriati's, you know, business opportunity is a good fit for you, um, you know, your lifestyle, your business goals, and really kind of what you're all about. And we find that that alignment, that early on alignment is really critical to the long-term success of our franchise partners. So um, we like to start and candidly, we talked about this internally, all the time with you know so if you talk to anybody in our team you're going to hear this probably more than once um, because it is really how we run the company now, it starts with what we call our why really our passion in life and our passion is is pretty simple it's to be extraordinary to be you know the best tasting highest quality sandwich franchise um, but for us that why kind of carries on throughout our life so whether it's being the best parents or you know, just the best at whatever we do, the best we possibly can be. And that means waking up every day and just trying to get better and better and better. Um, we work, you know, really closely as a team um, with all of our corporate, you know, support members, our franchise partners, our vendors, but it's always towards that goal of just getting better and better. The second thing I'd take a minute to point to is what we call our core values. Um, passion is, uh, passion to be the best is, is one of our core values, and I'd say it's the common denominator um, amongst all of our successful franchise partners and people that work in the corporate office and all the different support roles. Um, so it's, it's one that we want to make sure that you have, that you have a passion for being the best, for getting out there, for being part of your community, um, for running the very best and most successful business that you can run. Um, and just wake up every day kind of with that attitude. Second thing is Capriati started as a family business over 40 years ago um, in the Little Italy section of Delaware. And today we're a big company with lots of employees across the country. And I think probably half the states of, of the country now have Capriati's and the other half are getting Capriati's in the near, relatively near future. But we still treat it like a family business. And for us, that means we care about people. We know our franchise partners. Our franchise partners tend to be multi-unit operators, and we tend to have long-term relationships. We have franchisees, employees at the shops, you know, employees at the corporate support center that have been with us for literally decades. Um, and that's kind of unheard of in today's world. And I think that just speaks to the fact that we really care about people. We care you know, about them personally, not just from a business standpoint. Integrity for us, you know, there's a, the black and white piece of integrity. You either have it or you don't. But it also means, you know, walk the talk. If we say we're going to do something, if we say we're going to be there, 
there might be a franchise you know, contract in place that requires some minimal amount of support or minimal amount of performance. But to us, it means we're going to do everything we can do to help you be successful. We're going to pick up the phone on nights and weekends. We're going to coach you through a lot of maybe unforeseen issues and or opportunities that you might have. Our senior leadership team is going to be involved with you in the business. So that, that's just critically important to us. Profitability is not one that you normally see in core values, but it just to us means everybody wins. Um, in order for us to be successful as a brand, and I think it's one of the reasons we have continued to be successful over the last 40 years and are now literally at record growth, record revenues, is because we have that long-term commitment to making sure you know, that we know our franchisees have to be profitable in order for us to be profitable. And so we're very focused on what we call unit economics, how do we constantly improve that return on investment scenario for our franchise partners. And then lastly, genuineness. You know, we have a wide variety of people from a wide variety of backgrounds that have different experiences and different expertise that they bring to the table. And we don't want you to leave that at the door. We, you know, we welcome that. We're not looking to, to be a very formal bureaucracy like you know maybe some companies you've talked in the past are. We like this, you know, this genuine relationship, which gives us the ability to have real conversations. Um, and so those are our core values. And hopefully they, you know, they resonate with you, they align with you know, basically how you think about life, um, because we think that they're really critically important and should really be your first decision and whether this is gonna be a good fit for you, for you. And it's how we make our first you know, decision. And then our vision, kind of where we're heading. You know, here the stake in the ground is 500 profitable shops, all executing our uncompromising standards of quality and service by the end of 2025. You know, we're well on our way to that. We'll probably be updating that in the next year or so uh, because we've got well over 100 shops open. We've got over 200 shops already in our development pipeline that are working towards opening. Um, so we're, we're well on track for that. But you know, that really in a nutshell says, we're really a truly a national brand that's known for great service, great food, as Bruce alluded to, great quality that you just can't get anyplace else. So you know, again, that's kind of a brief overview of our, our values, our vision, our passions, um, and hopefully um, they align with you, uh, with kind of what you're looking for, uh, because it is really gonna guide what we do and the types of things we look at and the types of opportunities we take advantage of in the future. Everything for us has to align with, the, with this. Fantastic. Hey, David, um, we actually have a question that's, that's kind of leading into, you know, one of the next topics that we were, we were looking at talking about. And um, it really had to do with it, it, it. It's essentially, you know, we're serving sandwiches. How are we doing anything different than, you know, Jersey Mike's or Jimmy John's or places like that? So it'd be great if you could speak to some of that. Yeah, um, I would, again, kind of say, we serve food, you, you literally can't get any place else. You know, we're the largest buyer of butterball turkeys in the, in the restaurant world. Um, so Butterball raises a line of turkeys just for us to call the Capriati Super Tom. Um, you can't buy it in Costco or grocery stores. We're the only national brand that's roasting those whole butterball turkeys overnight in our shops and serving them, you know, you know that whole turkey fresh off the bone um, in our sandwiches. And that type of attention to detail, that care for bringing the very best goes throughout our menu. We're the only brand in the country, um, restaurant company that, that I know of, that serves Snake River Farms American Wagyu beef um, as our standard roast beef. It is the very best roast beef you can buy in the United States. There's, you can go to any fine dining restaurant you want and you're not gonna find a better quality of beef than that. Um, but it goes throughout our menu. I would tell you we have the very best meatballs I've ever had in my life. I'll tell you even our things, you know, some of our sandwiches like our Italian sausage, it's the best sausage I've ever had. You know, we have a, a meat purveyor that provides our cheese steaks 
um, that you know their their employees literally wear Capriati's uniforms when they're on the line, you know, manufacturing our beef for us. So you know we just go the extra mile, um, and I think that's the reason that we have what we call cap addicts. People who just love our food, they're addicted to it, and the reality is you you can't get it anyplace else. No one else is doing this kind of work, going to, to these kind of extremes. Um, and going back to our values, what you can expect us to do in the future is keep raising that bar. This year, we just introduced our Impossible Cheese Steaks, which if you haven't tried it, is as good as, and some people think they're better, depending upon their taste, as our, you know, literally award-winning cheese steaks. Um, they're incredible. Um, so anything you see us do in the future, here's the Wagyu beef, um, you know, which is, it's not fair to look at these pictures. Of <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's the kind of stuff you can't get anyplace else. And you really are, our customers really get addicted to it. Our biggest problem in life as a brand is getting people to try something else. They get addicted to the capistrami or to the Italian or the cheese sticks or the, or the Bobby. The Bobby was named best sandwich in America. You know, nobody else has ever done that. Um, so it's just about having the kind of food, the kind of product that you can't find anyplace else. So we don't think of ourselves as another sub shop, just slicing, you know, kind of formed and pressed meat and cheeses. We're, we're really going to the roots of making sure we bring our customers the very best. That's, that's awesome, David. You're making me hungry. Um, there's, there's another question here that has to do, and you, you touched on this a little bit, David, as far as like, you know, the vision for the future. But if you, if you wouldn't mind elaborating a little bit on, you know, the question here is, is how are we, how are we expanding, you know, and what is our strategy of growth, you know, over the next, you know, three to five years? Well, I will say Capriati's is um, really in a kind of a unique position where we are continuing to expand, to expand at record levels, continuing to grow our revenues. And Jane McPherson, our head of marketing, gets an awful lot of the credit for this, experienced record revenues in our shops. Um, so even, you know, during the, the, the pandemic, uh, we've continued this, you know, this track record of growth and success, regardless of almost what's happening in the, in the you know, external environment. Uh, but all that being said, we don't look at innovation in just terms of food. We look at innovation in terms of how does Capriati's stay ahead of everybody else. And that means we've been working on things like the delivery aggregators. You know, we have national agreements with virtually all of the major providers. We have national agreements with all, with all the ghost kitchen guys, Cloud Kitchens, Kitchen United Free. You know, we've got a full technology roadmap. Um, so we're not having to do what I would call make pivots you know, short-term pivots because we don't have a, a strong long-term strategy. We're working on that all the time. So we just recently launched our first ghost kitchens. We've got virtual brands and tests in both our corporate shops and now going into ghost kitchens. And we've got a ton of other in innovation um, and, and conversations going on already around things like mobile kitchens and robotics and, you know, artificial intelligence and how all those things are going to impact our industry. So we can really be proactive and leverage those opportunities versus what I see most brands doing, and that's being reactive and trying to figure out how to, you know, make it work after the fact. So I think one of the reasons, one of the big reasons we are being so successful is we're very forward thinking. I don't think of ourselves as being bleeding edge, but certainly forward edge uh, on adopting and evaluating and making sure we've got the right partners because that's a really big piece of, of figuring out how to do this is making sure we have best in class partners um, to help us you know take advantage of these opportunities that's fantastic david thank you so much i'm gonna i'm gonna shift gears a little bit here this from a from a y capriati standpoint and and you know spend a little bit of time talking with uh jane mcpherson and and jane just to kind of to set the ball rolling here with you, you know, really what, 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 
you guys do such an amazing job on the marketing side, not just on the consumer side of really, you know, educating consumers about the brand, about who we are, about what we're doing and, and how we're different, but, but also on the, the, the franchise partner side, you know, really setting them up for success in, in, um, in their markets. And, and many of those markets are, are brand new today. What, what are some of the things that, that you see as the key drivers in really building that brand awareness in new markets? Um, you know, we've recently opened in, uh, in a suburb of Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, we, we recently opened in Kansas City. We opened earlier this week in Bentonville, Arkansas. But again, those are all new markets. And what are you guys doing really to, to help set us apart from, from the fray? You know, thanks for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here. Um, in terms of what we're doing, you know, we are so lucky as marketers at Capriati's because we have such amazing stories to tell. Um, and our franchise owners really benefit from the us, all of the amazing products that we have and our ability to tell that story about all of, you know, the hand rolling of the meatballs, the amazing Wagyu um, cheese steaks and Wagyu roast beef products we have, you know, our premium top round cheese steaks um, made with this amazing steak meat um, and all the chicken cheese steaks we have on our capastromies. I mean, those in 40 years of brand heritage, we have um, a, really an opportunity to tell that story to customers in new markets. So it's very a food, much a food focused story when we're introducing Capriati's and it's, you know, customer, everybody is looking for their next favorite meal. And we're able to illustrate that and communicate that in the advertising we've been doing. Um, what we have found is when we go into new markets, we're very focused, not on the entire new city because it just, it's too heavy of a lift for the, for us. Um, for the budgets we have because we're, we want to be as efficient as possible when we launch a, a brand in a new market. We want to be, we're really focused on efficiently reaching the customers that are the most, the people who are going to be most likely to be your next, you know, your new customers, your new fans, your the cap addicts in your trade area. We're very focused on reaching the people that are, you know, two, one, two, three, four, five miles from those new shops because those are the people who are going to be the most likely to um, fall in love with Capriati's. Um, what we've been doing is we've been announcing the coming soon um, of a new shop, you know, a few days before opening to start seeding that message and start introducing that our products look and taste and, and are, all, are made so differently than the competition. So we start introducing that a few days ahead of opening. And we run a lot of video advertising because video advertising allows us to show off how different and amazing our products look. It allows us to show off what a big golden turkey looks like and how it looks coming out of the oven and what it looks like when we pull the meat off and make sandwiches with it because all of those food stories are so different than the pressed meat or the prepackaged salami um, that's coming from so many other um, of our competition. Um, really, it's and we're also able to show off um, with those, you know, those that advertising how it's so easily not only so delicious and so premium and so high end, but also so accessible for delivery or for takeout or to eat in. Um, so we've been using a lot of video advertising to introduce our new shops. Um, we also do a lot of social advertising, um, but we also um, have a pretty well. Um, define target market and we could, are able to reach that target market really efficiently with the advertising we've been running. Um, we've got a good track record of opening incredibly strong with the programming we have in place um, and effectively launching new shops um, for new franchise partners who are so excited and so jazzed about their early success. Um, it's been really fulfilling and satisfying for all of us working with them to um, help them get their new shops off the ground. That's really, that's really awesome, Jane. And uh, again, I, I just can't, you know, emphasize enough what a fantastic job that, that you and your team have done in this area. And there's a question that's come up, and um, I'm going to take just a minute here and ask it. And, you know, I, I think it's really, it can be either for, for David or Jane, but I'm going to ask it in a way that, that I think you can answer some of this, Jane, as well, is that, you know, have, what have we, what have we changed um, in our 
our model or operations or marketing in the current uh, COVID environment? Oh gosh. Well, you know, early on we made a lot of changes. We were able, because we had such a strong technology platform entering the pandemic, we were able to really lean on a lot of infrastructure we already built, which was a remarkably lucky place to be in. Uh, we did not see the degradation in our business that a lot of the rest of the market did as a result. Um, but we have a very strong online ordering infrastructure already in place. We have national relationships and a really strong presence in all of the big um, third party marketplaces already. And that allowed us to just really grow that face of business very quickly and very efficiently. But we did make some changes. Um, and luckily, because a lot of the infrastructure was so soundly built, they were um, pivots rather than big heavy lifts for us. Um, we were able to implement curbside pickup very early um, in April. We also implemented um, ordering from the outside. So you scan a QR code and get up our menu and place an order online and, um, and then choose curbside pickup and you know basically order from the restaurant without ever going inside the restaurant. But we did see that um, the most popular part of our, our ordering process really did take place online um, using a lot of the, the existing infrastructure we had in place. Um, so, you know, we did, you know, pivot to a lot of, you know, six feet apart and social distancing and um, making sure that our products um, that we were, but making sure that we were following all the CDC guidelines. But in fact, a lot of our, the procedures we already had in place were perfect already. You know, our product travels so well. It's so takeout friendly. We already had really secure packaging. Um, and that allowed us not to have to make a lot of adjustments um, to, to address the pandemic. Instead, we really focused on making sure people knew that you know, our product was safe, it traveled well, it was available for online ordering, available for delivery, and available for curbside pickup. So we were in a really great place. Um, and while we did make some changes, um, the biggest thing we did was really communicate um, the platform we already had in place and how perfect it was for this peculiar time in which customers were craving their favorite food, but unsure about how to get it. Right. Right. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jane. Um, you know, one of the other questions that popped up here is, is I think it would be great if we kind of ask this and I, David, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot back to you really quick in, and, and I think I'm going to come back to you, Jane, and hear your answer on this is, you know, what, what makes for a successful franchise partner at, at Capriati's? Um, I think there's three things you have to do. Number one, again, I would just go back to make sure we're aligned uh, because this is a long-term relationship. We have franchisees that have been with us for decades, literally decades, and we look at this long term. And so make sure we're the type of people you're going to enjoy working with. Um, I, I know that sounds really almost simple, um, but when the phone rings and my name's on it or your name's on it, my phone rings and your name's on it, you're looking forward to that phone call because life's too short. Otherwise, I can tell you, you know, little anecdote, Jane and I have worked together at several different brands and um, it's for over 20 years. Um, I know Jane doesn't look old enough to be saying that. I do. Um, He's only 25. How is that possible? I think it might be 25. <laughs> I've kind of stopped counting after a while. Um, but don't, that's like, don't, don't reveal these things, David. <laughs> But those types of relationships aren't, you know, they don't just happen, they're intentional. So I'd say make sure, you know, you're, we're the, the type of group you're looking for. Uh, number two, there's three things you have to be confident in. Um, number one, you have to be confident that you can find a great site in your market. We have, and you'll meet them as you go through the process, probably the best, one of the most real experienced real estate teams you're ever gonna work with. Um, you know, McDonald's, pedigree type people, Panera, that kind of folks. Um, and we have, um, in all of our departments, some of the best technology uh, to help us really be 
data driven or information driven, I'm making these decisions. Our executive team has to approve every single site. So our, while our confidence is high there, we want to make sure that, again, we're aligned. We're looking for you know, that A plus location that meets our economic requirements so that you can and will make money long term. Um, number two, it's, it's in our <clears throat> 10 year vision, our uncompromising standards of quality and service. We informally call that USOQUIS, um, which basically just is you know, short for, can you deliver the product and the service the way it's supposed to be delivered? Because if you make a Bobby, or a capistrami, or a cheesesteak, or a wagyu, you know, cheesesteak, or whatever. If you make it the way it's supposed to be made every time, I can literally guarantee you people are not just coming back, they're bringing your friend. Um, so that, those are really two, I'd say, you know, the first one, finding real estate's a one-time event. Operating and developing your team, you know, to provide that great food, that great service as an ongoing, you know, thing. And then the third piece I would say is really, uh, I'm gonna kind of switch it over to Jane here, it's that commitment to market. You are Capriati's in your market. And Jane and her team have some really great assets and stuff they put together is incredibly powerful and really efficient and is what I would call best in class. I think you know it is best in class, but you're still the brand. Um, you've gotta be committed to staying you know, front of mind throughout, you know, the life of that business and spending, investing in marketing. Um, and that's really, those are table stakes and I'll kind of let Jane take it from there. Yeah, you know, the nice thing about being in the restaurant business is, is you are influencing customer decisions every single day. You know, the car business, you know, you get to, you, you people only make car decisions once every most you know lots of people make them once every six seven eight nine ten years but people are making lunch decisions every single day and while you know they may love capriati's you know, remembering their passion for capriati's is not you know is is something they that they can need to be reminded of on a frequent basis um, and introducing capriati's to new customers all the time. So you're constantly building your customer base is an important part of the equation um, for continually growing and, and building and, and making your business thrive. So a commitment to marketing allows you to keep top of mind. So, you know, as consumers are making their lunch decision every day, you're in that consideration set. And of course, as soon as you're in that consideration set, you know, who could resist that cheesesteak as often as you can have it? But without being top of mind and, and without advertising to keep Capriati's top of mind, you do lose that customer frequency. Um, but in addition to that, in order to constantly be growing um, your, your business, um, keeping customers, new customers constantly being introduced to the brand is an important part of the equation. And we all know the first time we hear an advertisement, we don't take action. You know, it's just, we've all heard you know, hundreds, hundreds of millions of advertisements every day. You don't take action the first time you see an ad. You might not take action until the seventh, eighth, ninth, twelfth time you see an ad. You know, we do a good job of compressing that by, you know, showing you those ooey gooey cheesesteaks and those incredible, you know, hand pulled turkey on the bobbies. We get to compress that with some of our good storytelling and good creative. But people, you know, best of times don't take action until they see an ad four or five, you know, ten times. So we need to make sure, you know, our, we are partnering with our franchise owners to have advertising out in the marketplace, you know, to have a brand presence, to make sure you're out being the mayor of your town and representing Capriati's and participating and being an active, vibrant member of the community. So you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce and you're catering those lunches and um, creating additional business opportunities and doing business development for your catering and meeting the car dealership, you know, president so then you can get orders for their you know for on their fridays when they're you know supporting a big crowd of salesmen for the day um so having an active presence in marketing is an important part of the equation um and the nice thing is you know you've got great partners at capriati's and we're so committed to you we're so committed to the food we're so committed to telling that brand story and we have lots of amazing options and great support for building advertising programs 
getting the word out there about Capriati's and making sure that uh, we're partnering in your success. Those are great answers. Those are fantastic answers. And listen, we really appreciate everybody's time today. And, and this, the purpose of today was really to, to kind of talk about why Capriati's and, you know, Julie and I and the rest of the team are, are really available, you know, anytime to kind of dive deep into Capriati's and, you know, talk about our passion for everything there is Capriati's and, and, you know, dive into some of the nuts and bolts. But, you know, I'd really love to kind of wrap things up today. Uh, David and Jane, if, if you could each take a turn and, and speak to, and I know we've talked about some of it, but, you know, really why Capriati's? Why Capriati's and why not something else? If you could just kind of put a bow on, you know, our topic today, that would be super awesome if you could do that. And Jane, you want to kick up, kick it off? Yeah, you know, I Capriati's is so luxurious and indulgent, but so appropriate and accessible for everyday occasions. You know, we all lead busy lives. We're all, you know, have a lot of pressure on us. Um, consumers, you know, are running from one place to another, but the ability to add, you know, have that great taste in an accessible way all the time is such a great reason for being, you know, we're extraordinary and we talk a lot about how extraordinary Capriati's is, which is so true. But I think the yin of that yang is that it's also so accessible. You know, it's, you know, easy to order. It's easy to access. It's so appropriate for an everyday occasion. You don't have to wait for something special to happen to have a Wagyu cheesesteak or, you know, get a reservation at a fancy restaurant to access that type of taste and flavor. Um, you can have it and have it and every day at Capriati's and you know our our shops are well, you know, so set up for delivering that and our teams are set up and our culture is so committed to that extraordinary, but extraordinary on an everyday basis is makes is what makes Capriati's so special. That's awesome. That's awesome. David, how about you? Hey, I just always love listening to Jane, first of all. <laughs> She always, puts things, she always puts things really well. Uh, you know, I'd say Capriati is pretty unique. Um, and I, I'm a bit of a data person. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to go back to the data. I don't think there's anybody else in our category even close to experiencing the type of success we're continuing to um, experience in our existing stores and as we enter new markets almost on a weekly basis today, um, we are, we're, our existing stores have same store sales, what we call year over year same store sales that are, you know, literally the very, very top of the industry. Our growth has continued. You know, we get four or 5,000 inquiries, you know, every year for people looking to open the Capriati's. And we only move forward with about 1% of those. So we tend to be very selective, obviously. Um, and making sure that we have the right partners and we're very intentional about it. Um, and then our, you know, even amongst the, even in the midst of a crisis opening in markets that have never seen Capriati's, we're setting records in terms of grand opening revenues. So I think, you know, to some degree, the proof is in the pudding um, from a financial standpoint and performance standpoint. But secondly, I'd also say it's very rare to see or to have the opportunity to join a brand that's been proven over decades um, and still has a ton of you know, growth, what, uh, what I would call open space left available. You know, usually by the time you look at a McDonald's or whoever it is, you know, you know it's a great company, or, but there's very limited opportunity. So... I do believe timing is important in life. Um, and I think that we're in that, you know, that inflection point of the hockey stick uh, where our growth is really getting quite steep. And, but we've got 40 years of success behind us. This is not an overnight, you know, we didn't create this a year ago. We're not just a hot concept that just, you know, invented something new that's going to be cool for a few years and then go away. Um, so I just think the strength of the team, the, the people that we have to help you through the journey, support you and help you be successful, the strength of the brand, the strength of the product, um, and really our track record of success are the kind of things that if I was looking, 
you know, for what business to get into, those are the, those are the deal breakers that I would look, look for. And very, very few brands offer those, all of those all in one place. Wow, David, that was a, thank you for that segue and helping me get to my, my next topic there, um, just to kind of finally wrap everything up. And listen, first of all, I want to thank both of you for your time today. And you guys are amazing. And, you know, you make me want to sign up to, to join the brand. But I, I will just kind of tag on to what David said. Look, um, <clears throat> this is an amazing opportunity. And, you know, Julie and I are happy to spend time with each and every one of you to go into a lot of detail about the opportunity with Capriati's and, you know, answer any and all questions that you might have about the brand. And I will tell you that, you know, to, to David's point, we've got so many people looking at and considering the opportunity with Capriati's today. I would encourage you not to waste any time. And that's not just my sales pitch, but don't waste any time and reach out to us talk to us, find out about the opportunities available in your area. And nine times out of 10, there are gonna be opportunities available in your area to grow with this amazing, amazing brand. And thank you all so much for spending time with us today and taking time out of your busy schedules. We really do appreciate your time. And we look forward to speaking with all of you again in the very near future. Take care, have a great rest of your day. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.